Hey, this is Josh from Lead Dev, where we try to explain programming questions as simple and concise as we can. Today, we'll be looking at the problem Valid Sudoku. While solving the problem isn't hard itself, the real test of this question is how well you can handle your matrix manipulation. In the last past six months, this question has been asked quite frequently by Amazon, and this is another problem where I was asked in a phone screen interview. So being able to handle matrix manipulation is definitely a tool that you need to know. Sudoku is a 9 by 9 board that you might have seen in these things called newspapers back in the day. The goal of the game is to fill out each row so that they have 1 to 9 unique numbers without any repeating digits. Fill out all the columns to have 1 to 9 without any repeats. And each of the 9 3 by 3 subboxes to have the numbers 1 to 9 without any repeating digits. Specifically, these are the subboxes. Luckily for us, we don't have to solve the Sudoku problem because that's in a different Lico question. All we have to do in this problem is to ensure that our starting numbers is valid. So I won't go through the example because this is quite messy, but this given board is valid because all the rows have unique numbers, all the columns have unique numbers, and all of these subgrids are also unique. Example two is not, and I'm not going to go and find where the number is, but there is a duplicate somewhere. And the constraint to the problem is that it is a nine by nine board and that each of the entry of the board is either a valid number or a dot. This Sudoku problem is a cleverly disguised matrix problem. It's not really hard. The idea to solve this problem isn't difficult. In fact, the problem description even tells you how to solve it. However, given the board and being able to implement it is a completely different question. The idea to solve this problem isn't hard. We would just check each of the rows for duplicate values. So we check 5, 3, 7, no duplicates, that's fine. 6, 1, 9, 5, no duplicates, that's fine. And so on and so forth. And then after we check all the rows, we can check all the columns for any duplicates. So 5, 6, 8, 4, 7, no duplicates, 3, 9, 6, also no duplicates, and we continue on. And finally, if that's still fine, then we just need to check all of our subgrids. So we start in our first subgrid, we check 5, 3, 6, 9, 8, we didn't find any duplicates, so we continue to our next one, 7, 1, 9, 5, no duplicates, and so on and so forth. So the idea isn't hard, we just use a array or a set to keep track of all the numbers we've seen, and then see if we find them again. The hard part is being able to navigate through our matrix. And before we get to the live coding part, let's talk about the runtime a bit. The runtime of this problem is actually O of 1. Because the Sudoku board is a 9 by 9 board, so it's 81, and then we multiply that by 3 because we visit it 3 times. And it's always the case, so it's always a constant. As for space, it's also O of 1. While you might argue that, yes, we are storing some values inside a set or an array, it's not linearly scaling because we will always use a, for example, array of size 9 to keep track of all the numbers that we encountered. So which is why this runtime is constant and so is the space. Like we discussed before, there will be three steps in solving this problem. We want to check the rows, the columns, and then the subgrids. First, let's check all the rows. The first thing you notice is that we create an array of boolean called nums, which you can see in this whiteboard right here. This will be used to represent all the numbers that we've seen inside our rows, our columns, and our subgrid. Specifically, each index in the array represents the number. And so all we need to do is we will set it to be true if we see the number. And then if we encounter two again, we can check our array to see if we saw it before. And if we did, we return false. Otherwise, we just continue checking the rest of our rows. There is one specific case that we didn't talk about, and that's what happens when there's nothing in the specific cell. When that happens, we just continue forward. So a quick recap of what we're doing. We're doing a standard traversal through our board where we iterate through our rows and then our columns. 
and then we check if any of our current row item that we're at is the dot char and if it is we just continue otherwise we grab the char value we do a nifty trick where we subtract zero from it because chars are mapped to ascii values while we don't know what the actual ascii value is if we just subtract the ascii value we're at with the ascii value of zero that will actually give us the integer of the number that our ascii represents once we have our number we just check our array a boolean to see if we found if we have seen this number before and if we have we return false otherwise we just set that inside our array and then continue going through each of our rows so to help us get a bearing of our of our board these are our rows are our i value and our columns are our j value so what we're doing is we're first traver our outer loop we are traversing through all of our i values so we're looking at each of the rows one at a time and then the j value we're exploring each of the columns inside a row so starting out if i is zero and j is zero first we check to see if we have a dot cell an empty cell which we don't we have five so then we don't skip the specific grid then we just extract that value we do the ascii value of five minus the ascii value of zero which then will give us integer of five we check to see if we've seen five yet inside our array which we haven't so then we don't return false and then we just set that index to be true we continue incrementing through our j loop and so we look at index one and we see three three is also not in our array so we set that to be true and then we continue on to j2 and j3 both are empty so we just continue on i won't bore you by going through the whole process but essentially we find seven, we don't have any duplicates, so we just finish iterating through our columns in our first row. And then in our second row, we would reinitialize our array, which would basically set all of these indexes to be false, and we just repeat the same pattern. In this example, there's since there's no duplicate, we will finish looking through all of our rows without any problems. Now, the next thing we need to do after checking all of our rows is we need to check all of our columns. Now you might look at this code and you might say, Josh, isn't this the exact same code you wrote for the rows? And you'd be almost correct. It's basically the same. The only difference is that now in our outer loop, we're iterating through our J and then in our inner loop, we're going through our I. What that means is that in our board, we are actually starting at J equals zero. And then in our inner loop, we'll be checking all the rows of our column. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is how we would check columns inside a matrix. As so you can see, this problem isn't hard per se. It's mostly just testing your ability to navigate through a matrix. So now let me clean this up a bit. So we start at j goes 0 and i equals 0. And we find 5. 5 is not empty and, and we haven't seen it before, so we add it into our array. And then we start iterating through our i value. So at index one, we find six. Also haven't seen it. Two doesn't exist. We skip that. Index three, we find eight, which is true and kind of goes on four and then seven. And then that's all we have to do. Now that we've explored all of the columns, let's clean this board up a bit. All right, so now the tricky part. We have to start exploring all of the subgrids. To accomplish this, what we need to do is we need to find the top left corner of each of the subgrids, which can be here, here, and here. And then we need to investigate the full three by three submatrix that we've encountered. And this is how we'll do it. So I broke down the problem into two separate chunks. The first chunk of work is we need to identify the top left corner of each of our subgrids here, here, and here. We know the index of each of the rows and columns that we're looking for, and that is 
zero, three, and six. So what we did here is that we wrote a helper function that will check each of the sub matrix that we've given it. We iterate through three of the rows, three of the columns, and then for each of the index value, we just multiply it by three to get the starting point of our sub matrix. For a quick understanding, at j equals zero, we also start zero, which will give us our starting point, which is zero, zero. Once we finish checking that, we change j to one, and one times three is three, which then would give us our next row, which would be over here, this value, this three. And then we can just check this subgrid. And then once j is two, two times three is six, so that will give us this subgrid. So now that we have n out of the way, let's define our helper function. So in our helper function, let's say we check our first subgrid, our row is zero and our column is also zero. To be able to check for duplicates inside a subgrid, we have to only we have to make sure that we only check our three by three matrix. And to accomplish that, we use our starting row and column value, and then we add two to them to ensure that we'll only iterate through our three by three grid. And then from that point forward, it's basically a repeat of our uh, row checking logic. So we can do the exact same thing. Check to see i and j equals zero. And we see we have five. We don't, we haven't seen five yet. So we set that to be true. We increment j to be one. Three doesn't exist yet. So we add true. Then we increment our j to be two. There's nothing. So we don't fill anything out. Then we increment our i to be index one j is zero again in our inner for loop we find six haven't seen six yet so we add it to be true and we kind of just repeat this pattern nothing for the next two we start at i equals two nothing for the first one we see nine and then we see eight and after finishing exploring our sub matrix if we haven't found any duplicates we return true and then once we finish iterating through everything inside our sub matrix, we just return true, which then would give us the answer to this problem. Now let's submit our code. And there we go. As I've been saying before, intuitively, this problem isn't hard. We've just checked the rows, the columns, and the subgrid. The real test of this question is to see how you handle matrix manipulations. Have you found this video helpful? Consider hitting the like button and maybe hitting the sub button to get daily updates. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video and have a great day.